A classic chicken milanese in San Francisco. When you cut into that breading, oh my God, it's heaven. An umami rich Japanese curry in Oakland. This curry is smoother than Luther Vandross. And fantastic Froyo creations in Berkeley. So boom, halfway through, you got double toppings. You gotta try this. Check Please You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area's new spin-off, You Gotta Try This. We have three guests and each one recommends the one dish they crave the most and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Along the way, we take a deep dive into the stories behind the dishes, learning the special ingredients and techniques that make them so delicious. Because we can't be back in the studio just yet, I'm coming to you from a pretty stunning setting, Merced Restaurant on Treasure Island. Joining me virtually at the Check Please table today are some Bay Area VIPs. Actor and director Margot Hall, singer, songwriter, producer, fantastic Negrito, and Oakland Roots soccer player Max Ornstill. Welcome everyone. Hey, good to be here. Woo yeah. Yo. Before we get to your dishes, I just have to point out though that we have a pretty fun six degrees of separation going on here. Margo is in line spotting the new TV series. I tried. The blind spotting soundtrack features a song by Fantastic Negrito, who also happens to be a super fan of the Oakland Roots soccer team. So much of a fan that he composed their official anthem, Root City. Always remember that we are from the town. And ah. the final connection, Max plays defense for the Oakland Roots. It's meant to be. Yep. <laughs> All tied up. All right, now we're ready to talk about food. I'm ready. Okay. When it comes to songwriting, Fantastic Negrito draws plenty of inspiration from Oakland, his longtime home. It's fitting that the dish he picked was dreamed up by an equally cool Oakland chef. Chicara Ono's Omo Curry is one of the signature dishes at Della Curo. This is kind of my dream. You know, I open the sushi places, bento places, izakaya, but I'm always thinking, you know, open the kare restaurant. Most of Japanese people's favorite food is curry. Even like five-year-old kid, like my age, a little bit older than me, young student, everybody likes it. So that's why I want to introduce to the, you know, all grand people, East Bay people to our curries. Our restaurant name is Dela Kuro, meaning Dela is like a super, and the Kuro is black. So that's why we choose, you know, Dela Kuro curry, because we specialize in very black curry. We using the caramelized onions, spice, saute before to black. We use things uh, curry based from the Japan, cooking like five hours. The difference of our black curry and the other curry is our curry is very black, you know, other curry is more like a yellow. And also black curry is very mild because we use a lot of onions, tomatoes, and some fruits like apple, mango, you know, then we make it very mild. I start making the black curry then I feel this curry is maybe very good with eggs. So that's why I try making the scrambled egg curry, slow cooked curry. Then I feel om curry is best match for our sauce. Omu is meaning Japanese very soft omelette. Our rice is from Japan too. Uh, it's called koshishikari. 
we choose the rice because more moisture compared to the United States rice. I want a customer to enjoy like visiting somebody's house, relax, enjoy to come in the Swans Market. You know, we have a nice community. My customer eating avocado with like a smile, it makes me and my team very happy. All right, fantastic. Tell me how you found this dish and why it is so special. Why it's so fantastic. Well, how do I find most things? But I like to just get out there and explore. And whenever I'm writing an album, I just start walking as far as I can go. I think that's how I found it, by just exploring this amazing landscape that we have. Yeah. You know, you see Japanese restaurants everywhere, but this one felt the most like actually being in Japan. Like you were at someone's Japanese grandmother's house in Hokkaido. That's how it felt. So, so very authentic. You're really getting an authentic Japanese curry. Yeah. And it's obviously different than Indian curry and other curries. Yeah. This curry, it's like a, it's a warm, mild, aromatic, well-balanced. And it's just a little kick in it, but not too much. Tell me about the texture, because I think that's one of the things that sets Japanese curry apart. Well, the texture is smoother than Luther Vandross. I mean, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's just, yeah, it's um, unexpected. Like, I, I respect the craftsmanship that went into making that curry as presentable and as smooth and silky and black, like a panther. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Margo, tell me about your experience with this curry. Yeah, I was, I was so surprised by this dish. The spice was well balanced, and I love that the egg was very creamy and it's set right on top of the rice. And I also want to shout out the little slaw that they had on the side. Yeah. It was the perfect crunch because it added a little coolness and it was a beautiful day and I sat outside and I was like, wow, I don't know if I would have ever tried this if it had not been recommended. So right. I thank you, fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> so Max, now, are you an experienced curry eater? Is that something that you love or was this a new experience for you? I'm definitely a fan of curry, but I'm not the most experienced curry eater. So this definitely opened my eyes to um, the whole world that is Japanese curry. And I'm a fan, that's for sure. I would say the level of tanginess was fantastic. Shout out fantastic. And um, <laughs> Just all around, Margo said it, it was super well balanced. I love the option to have the curry with the rice, uh, to just have the omelet with the rice on its own. Yeah. And for dessert, you know, if you really want to go there and you really want to feel like you, you're floating, try the Sando sandwich. I mean, it's overindulgence a little bit. It's like, you know, white bread, but it's kind of like some guilty pleasure. Like, okay, I'm going to eat this white bread. Nobody's looking, you know, and, and then there's this layer of, just too much cream, but so good. But in the middle of it, as if it's seeking for some type of redemption, there's fresh fruit. <laughs> you know it's wrong, but it's yeah. so good, you know? And Max, yeah. did you have any dessert? I wish I did. The way it's being described, I wish, <laughs> but unfortunately, no. I'll have to save it for next time. It's a reason to go back. Yeah. All right. If you would like to try the Omu Curry at Della Coro, it's located in Swans Market in downtown Oakland. Fantastic Negritos pro tip, Try the Sando sandwich for a sweet finish. From acting to directing to teaching, Margot Hall is a Bay Area theater icon. So it's appropriate that her go-to entree has become somewhat legendary in its own right. For more than 30 years, the chicken milanese has been a popular mainstay at San Francisco's Garibaldi's restaurant. Garibaldi's has been around for over 30 years. I think one of the things that makes Garibaldi's so special as a neighborhood restaurant and that quintessential one is that it changes with the times and with the people who come in. We have people who come in in the golf shorts and people who come in in tuxedos and ball gowns going to the premiere of the ballet. We'll take you as long as you're decent. Cooking has always been fun for me and I started off basically at an American style restaurant and worked at Delfina for years, so it shaped me with Italian style cooking. 
all about fresh and seasonal and just using what's available and local. The menu at Garibaldi has some classics. We have chicken milanese, which is one of our most famous dishes here at Garibaldi's. Lamb tenderloins is another classic on the menu. And then it gives us room to play with the menu. What he really means is that it gives room him to play. So, which I love, because he gets to do some amazing, wonderful things that you wouldn't even think of. But milanese is what brings people into the Absolutely. restaurant. Absolutely, that's our staple, of course. As you can see, it's got a nice, crispy, golden brown. The original chef, Danielle Martez, shout out to you, Danielle, bless you. Um, amazing, a wonderful chef. He created the original chicken milanese that we know it as Garibaldi's. It's gone through some updates and incarnations as time has passed, but he was definitely the one to bring together all of that Italian influence as well as a little bit of French. The secret to the milanese, honestly, I think is the pounding thin. That goes into our buttermilk marinade. And then that buttermilk marinade, oh my gosh, it just makes it so tender and juicy. Once it is breaded and then a little bit of frying. We'll brown it on both sides. I will dump the oil and then we throw it in the oven to finish cooking. You cannot go wrong, it is delicious. The, the burr blanc adds a lot too. It's a nice bright, the keepers add a little bit of salinity, a little brininess. The wine from the reduction in the butter sauce is just, it just makes it pop. <laughs> What would you do for your perfect bite? The perfect bite for me would be a little spoonful of mashed potatoes, the beurre blanc, the chicken with some all down sea salt, and a little bit of wild arugula, all in one fourth full bite. Oh yeah, but you definitely have to get the capers as well. You gotta get a couple capers in there as well. Agreed. We have a chicken milanese. The menu changes frequently, but we have the classics here, which are regulars and neighborhood loves that if we took it off the menu. We would, would have a revolt, we, we really would. Revolt. would. Yeah. If we ever took milanese off the menu, <laughs> yeah. that would. No way. Now, Margo, you live in Oakland, but this dish is in San Francisco that you obviously have fallen in love with. Why is it so special? Well, it's interesting because I came across this restaurant um, because I was doing some private coaching for one of my mentees, and we did a bargain. And she said, how about if I give you a gift certificate to the restaurant where I work? Right. I got the gift certificate and uh, me and my fiance went there and we were like, this is a nice place. And I looked at the menu and I said, hmm, I want to try this chicken milanese. And I fell in love with it. Right. So you have this beautifully breaded breast of chicken, a top these fluffy mashed potatoes. And you have the perfect sauce and the capers. And when you cut into that breading and you see that that meat is super tender and you put a little bit of those mashed potatoes on there, oh my God, it's heaven, it's heaven. Now, it also happened to be my birthday. And so that became our birthday restaurant. Um, fantastic. Tell me about your experience at Garibaldi's. It was a, it's a pretty um, upscale establishment. Sometimes you go, well, the place is upscale a little bit and maybe the food won't be as good. So I was a little, a little bit had that chip on my shoulder and I went in and I tried it and I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> so this is uh, this is for hard hitters and heavy duty folks. I mean, this is um, you better skip breakfast. And look, <laughs> it is a hearty water. dish, isn't it? Just drink it is water all day before you have this because I couldn't finish it, but the taste was I get it. It was outstanding and intoxicating and all, all the adjectives, but um it, it was heavy. Max, you're a soccer player. Come on, you burn a lot of calories. Could you could finish this dish, couldn't you? I'm not gonna lie, I had half for lunch, half for dinner, uh <laughs> like the rest of them. Uh, but it was amazing. It was just as good for dinner as it was for lunch. Um, you know, when you get that crispy exterior, sometimes the inside isn't as tender, but the inside was very tender. Also, the salt crumbs on the top was just a touch of class. You know, it's not like it was just some salt out of a salt shaker, but it was like some classy salt, if that <laughs> exists. And, you know, it, it tasted that way, too. Uh, the mashed potatoes were a nice balance. It could last you a whole day if you wanted it to. That's right. So when you're saying it's upscale, it is a very nice restaurant. 
And, you know, in terms of the, of the price quality, you have to say, okay, that's a lot of food for the price, right? That's yeah. True. You get two meals out of it. I, I, I never thought about that, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause go. a lot of times you go to places in that there's very small portions yeah, they're not um, and my fiance calls it cute food. So this was not cute food. It was good, hearty food. No, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and do you have anything to sip alongside that, Margot? Because they do have a nice uh, small wine list, but it's got some international selections, very well priced, actually. Yes, I love Prosecco. So I had a nice glass of Prosecco along with the dish. I am a Prosecco girl myself, and I have to say that anything fried with anything bubbly is the perfect pairing. So yes. I also want to talk about that big mound of arugula salad, which adds that cool crispness. So would this be a dish that you'd go back for for a birthday or something, Max? Oh, for sure. I had it to go, so I didn't get the whole restaurant ambiance. So I think I need to go back to get the full experience. So I'll definitely bring some friends and family back and... We'll probably all share one dish. <laughs> Fantastic. Would you make the trek, you know, from yeah, Oakland over to San Francisco uh, for this? It year? was a little bit out of my normal range, so I thought it was a good find. And, um, you know, it's a good place to you want to impress somebody who's, you know, from New York or something or L.A. Be like, well, I've got a place. And, Margo, we know you're going back for every birthday, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you would like to try the chicken melanese at Garibaldi's, it's located on Presidio Avenue in San Francisco. Margo's pro tip, Prosecco is a perfect pairing for the dish. I wholeheartedly agree. Max is a pro soccer player who stays in top form by eating a pretty regimented diet. On the rare occasion he does indulge in dessert, he opts for his longtime childhood favorite, a cool creamy chocolate vanilla swirl from a sweet little spot that's long been a hit with the Cal crowd. In Berkeley, it's Yogurt Park. Yogurt Park has been open here since 1977, and during that period of time, we have served several million customers. We were one of the first in California to open a yogurt store and in the United mm -hmm. States. For sure. And by far, we're the, the longest frozen yogurt store in the Bay Area. I've had over 1,300 Cal students work here through all the years, and they have been the biggest asset that this store has ever had. You know, I have a lot of memories in this store from being a little kid coming to work with my dad before Cal football games, coming breaking down boxes, snacking on toppings, of course. Ryan came on about 15 years ago, so now we have a truly family business, and he's been a great asset to the, to the business and a great son. And so it, it's, been, it, it's been terrific, you know, from that end of it. Some Pretty much every day when you come in, there's going to be something new on the menu. We've got six flavors every day. Usually a flavor sticks around for three to four days, and then we swap it out with something else. So over the years, my father and myself have developed you know, numerous flavors on our own, like caramel banana foster, creme brulee, hazelnut cappuccino. We've tried probably 100 different flavors. Only a handful make it. Yeah, we've had some duds, like uh, maple bacon donut. Uh, which actually I didn't think was too bad, but it didn't sell. Well, we have three different sizes, mini, small, large. When a customer orders the product, we fill the cup all the way up to the top, and then we do a little spoon technique where we scoop out half of the yogurt off to the sides, and then we jam it full of toppings. Put the top back on, and then put a little bit of topping on top. By far our most popular toppings, Oreos, followed by almonds, rainbow sprinkles, Cookie dough, that's a popular one, especially with the college students. We go through probably about 20 pounds of cookie dough a day. Also mochi, cheesecake. Don't forget M&M's and Reese's peanut butter cups. We've got it all. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> it's a happy product. Like it's hard to come to work every day and be in a bad mood when you're seeing the looks on kids' faces when you're putting rainbow sprinkles and gummy bears and yeah. they're choosing their toppings and yeah, and Yogurt Park's become a, a hangout for especially the college students here at, at Cal. We yeah. even have a nickname. Yeah. It's called Yopo. Yopo. That's what the college kids call it. Yeah. Go get Yopo. some Froyo at Yopo. Yeah. 40 more years. <laughs> so, Max, 
Yes. That you have been going to Yogurt Park since you were a kid. Oh, yeah. And you always order the same thing? I want to say that I go and try new flavors and I'm, you know, open to new things. I am open to new things, but when it comes to Froyo and Yogurt Park, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I, you know, I go with the chocolate and vanilla swirl every time. Uh, and I go with pretty much the standard rainbow sprinkles and mini M&Ms toppings almost every time. Occasionally, I'll throw in uh, some Reese's Pieces. What sets it apart compared to some of the bigger yogurt chains across the world is that, you know, usually you get your toppings on top. You go through those in the first few bites and you're like, okay, now I got 80% of just pure yogurt, which is, you know, cool to a yogurt lover, but you know, I'm a big toppings guy myself. So one of the great things about YP is that they'll load up halfway up with toppings. So you get through that first layer, you know, and you're thinking, all right, here comes a yogurt. Boom, halfway through, you got double toppings. Do you remember the first time you tried this? How old were you? I've probably been going there since I was a toddler. Uh, my mom went to Cal. Uh, she played tennis there, and so when she wanted to indulge, she went to Yogurt Park. Uh, then when my dad and mom were dating in the Bay Area, they would go there as a dessert spot. And then just as a kid, they took me there. And so I honestly don't remember the first time, uh, but I do remember the last time, and it was a few days ago. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to forget. And I have to point out, because, you know, there are frozen yogurt places everywhere now, but this one dates back to 1977. So this one is really history in a cup. And Marco, you've been going there for a while, haven't you? Yes, this is my favorite yogurt place. When I saw this, I was like, oh my God, because I teach at Cal, I teach in the theater department. And so on my way to the parking lot, there's yogurt park. And so every now and then, normally I get the one with no sugar. So I was super excited that I had an excuse to get M&Ms and sprinkles. See, you had to do the assignment that you were assigned from us, right? right? I, what could I do, right? <laughs> so I had to eat it. And it was good. It was so good. It's just the creamiest yogurt I've ever had. It's just such a sweet place. They're so nice. The prices are great. And fantastic. Have you been to this spot? So yes, okay. Yogurt Park. I mean, that's just part of the Bay Area, the fabric and the texture of the Bay Area. I mean, I've been going to this place since I was a kid. Uh, I went to Berkeley High. I was in a program called Upward Bound where we lived on campus. So this place is very, very familiar to me. But the interesting thing is I don't think I've been there in like 20 years. And was it as good as you remember when you uh, went back? Like uh, Margo said, that's the best yogurt place in the Bay Area right there. And I just, I forgot, so I'm very, grateful uh, to be reunited with, with Yogurt Park. It's perfect. Okay, Max, do you have any tips for us about the yogurt? I do. One of the great things about Yogurt Park is that they really f fill your cup up to the brim. You get a full serving. Yeah. And so my pro tip is I get a size mini and I get a mini in a small cup. And so they fill the mini up to the brim, but then I don't have any spillage over the sides on my hands. So, you know, I keep it clean and they keep it creamy and it's great. If you'd like to try Yogurt Park, it's located on Durant Avenue in Berkeley. And Max's pro tip, get a mini in a small cup to avoid the melting down of the sides. And now a visit to Fantastic Negrito's neighborhood. Producer Cecilia Phillips is on the hunt for off-the-grid dining experiences and having a little fun along the way. And today is special because it's about the future. When Fantastic Negrito set out to do Storefront Records as a marketplace for the community, what was the mission behind having this monthly event? Eat, meet, and greet. Every month, that's what we do. We are here to support local artists and independent music and creativity. Our record label used to be a liquor store, so we're coming here to bring positivity <laughs> and to repurpose that space by opening up our space to other people free of charge and helping put money in their pockets. So our Mexicue, which is a cultural blend of a Mexican and African-American culture with the barbecue. Get in there, not even a big hard bite, just a little bit and everything else just pulls smooth off the bone. I love it. Chai snickerdoodle. Ooh. These are secretly vegan cookies. You help 
called out on me. You didn't tell me there, vegan. Yes, because I can't tell you until you try it, and you're like, wow, that was awesome. We made these last night. All you need is some marshmallows and the Rice Krispies cereal. What is the one dish that just gets you excited in your happy place and makes you want to like move and groove? Got to be tacos. Ecuadorian food. I love Japanese food and I love ramen. Can you show me what your happy dance would be? You know, it was a little, a little shimmy dance, you know? Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. ready? Oh, okay. this is like a whole... Here's a taco dance. this. That's our show. I have to say thanks to my incredibly entertaining guests. I'm Leslie Sobraco and I'll see you next time on Check Please. You've got to try this. Cheers everyone. Cheers to you. Thank Cheers. you so much. Salud. Cheers. Thank you. Salud. Thank you. Chin chin. Saoji. Which of these dishes would you try? Follow us on Instagram or like us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Check Please You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. Being from Oakland shaped who I am and my identity. And then tying together what makes Oakland, Oakland is the intersection of all these different cultures and people and food. You got Japanese curry, you've got a nice restaurant in San Francisco with some chicken malanese and some yogurt in Berkeley. You know, that's exactly the bay. You could get all that in the same day. Yeah. You'll probably be pretty full, but that's a pretty <laughs> damn good day if you ask me. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of days like that in Oakland. Yeah.